Hi, this is Stephen from Own at Disown. In this video, I am going to show how you get FreeSync working on your Dell G5 Special Edition and how the Radeon 5600M gets on in nine games and various quality settings. I gave a glimpse of the laptop's thermals in my first look video, and the sensors were combining both the CPU and the GPU wattage to give a total system power. In balance mode, the system power goes up to 105 watts, and in high performance mode, activated by pressing the G key on the function row, up to 116 watts. This also activated the max fan. So I will be showcasing the difference in frame rate when activating that. I was using the T control sensor to measure the temperatures, and this corresponds to the temperatures reported by the Alienware control center, the CPU overview reading. This is the first temperature shown in my overlay, and is the one we should be using. I had a number of people questioning this, so in this video, I don't show the power figures, but instead add the CPU core sensor so you can see the temperature of that. Now I have been working with AMD to resolve some issues, and they informed me that the temperatures I was getting are accurate, and are within the expected range for the system. I wanted to show you this in case any fanboys start slamming me. I want AMD to do well as much as anybody else. Okay, with that out of the way, AMD just released a new driver that fixes the FreeSync issue. I confirm that it does work, which I'm sure this will make everybody happy. Now, thank you to AMD for addressing this so quickly, and I put a link of it in the description below. The next thing I noticed when recording my gameplay footage using my capture card connected via HDMI and output it to an external monitor was that for some games, I would get a reduction in temperature. Now, it didn't happen all of the time, nor did it happen in every game. Sometimes it took a little while for the temperatures to drop, but it happened enough to make me record it and show it to you. All I can think, it, it must be due to the smart shift technology. I looked at the smart shift graph when attached to a monitor, and I saw no change in the smart shift activity. AMD didn't answer my question on that one, so we will just file that in my mystery drawer. Now here is Far Cry 5 using ultra settings, high performance at the top, and balanced at the bottom. The 5600M is supposed to boost up to 1265 MHz, but it only approached that on a couple of occasions here, and the GPU utilization is actually quite low. Using the inbuilt benchmark, we see that the extra 10 watts in high performance does give it about an extra 3 FPS. Nothing you were going to notice, really. Minimums are good, and I didn't notice any stutters in the game. Here is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, DX12, higher settings. Now the first thing that struck me was the low boost clock of the 4800H, and that is why the CPU temperature is good. The GPU is boosting higher this time, and this is probably a good example of AMD Smart Shift working as it adjusts more power away from the CPU and putting it towards the GPU. We see a similar difference between high performance and balanced, and since the temperatures were great, one might as well use the higher power mode. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was one of those games that seemed to run cooler on the external monitor versus the laptop screen, so I showcase that here. The GPU seems to be cooler when attached to the monitor, and since it shares heat pipes for the CPU, perhaps that's the reason. Using the inbuilt benchmark, there is not much difference between the two power modes, one or two frames at best. Here is Rainbow Six Siege using ultra settings, using high performance mode. I have gameplay on the laptop screen at the top, and footage from my monitor at the bottom. It seems that the smart shift may be working better when attached to the monitor. The CPU clock is lower, and perhaps more power is going to the GPU. Using the inbuilt benchmark, it seems that high performance mode has an increasing benefit as we lower quality settings. So if you are looking to maximize frame rate, it looks like this could be the way to go. Here is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order on my monitor. I expect it to be about 90 degrees on the laptop screen. Again, we see a slight improvement using high performance, and since it is so easy to turn on, and I don't see too much change in thermals, I would activate it for sure. Now onto Star Wars Battlefront 2 using DX11 Ultra settings. At the top is footage from the laptop screen, and at the bottom from the monitor. Again, we see that the CPU clock and temperature are higher when using the laptop display. We see good frame rates and a 4% improvement at ultra settings using high performance, which increases to 8% at low. And the 1% lows are also very good. Here's Battlefield 5, DX11 Ultra settings. High performance at the top and balanced at the bottom. I didn't see much change in temperatures between the laptop display and the monitor in this game. And I measure the frame rate whilst playing a multiplayer match. I always use the same map and results are consistent as I play the whole campaign. Now one thing I do notice is quite large swings in CPU temperatures during a match. At times 10 to 13 degrees and I think this must be smart shift at work as it lowers and raises the CPU clock rate. 
High performance was quite impressive in this title, a 5% gain at ultra settings and 20% extra at low. But the 1% lows were all very low. But that being said, I didn't notice any dips when playing. For Overwatch, I used the replay feature. I found the CPU clock rate to be fairly low in this title, so the thermals were quite decent and frame rates were also good. GPU utilization is good as well, so I think SmartShift is working well here. Looking at the chart, we were at 100 FPS at epic settings with a very good 1% low and good scaling till we reach high settings. Lowering to medium doesn't really help any further. Finally, I was asked to benchmark the new game Valorant, so here it is at high settings using balance mode. You really have no problem hitting above 150 FPS in this title. Now my next video will be the review of the Dell G5 Special Edition, and I will also do a comparison between the 5600M, the 1660Ti, and the GTX 2060, so make sure you're subscribed for those videos. Thank you for watching. Bye now.